My name is Mish. And I'm Annie. And Coffee House is finally here this week. Yes, guys, Saturday, March 23rd at 11.30 p.m. in the Vine Center on the big stage. You can't miss one of the best events of the entire year. And if you haven't been before, this is the year that you, this is the year yeah. that you will go. Yeah. Okay? And past the past. I'm excited to see Mickey Mouse and Disney and Pixar. And, and, and skipping curfew. Come on now, it's the best thing to do. What more can you ask for? <laughs> If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you like it, then you yes, should have put a ring on it. Yes. Well, you know what? <laughs> if you want to put a ring on it, after Coffee House on Sunday, you're going to be looking all beautiful and gorgeous. Head on over to the Bridal Expo <gasps> on Sunday, March 24th. I heard Nisha has been looking for a ring. This is the perfect place to make it happy. <laughs> um, anyways, 2 to 5 p.m. in the Lahaven space. Do not come after me. Uh, we'll see you there. It is officially one week, one week, until the five minute film festival submissions are due. Yeah, and for all you procrastinators who thrive in high leverage, high pressure situations, don't put this one off. You have until 11.59 p.m. on March 29th. We wanna see your masterpieces, so don't wait. Just share it with the world now. Oh, it's so just right to my heart. <laughs> April 8th through the 11th in the Lahey event space, do not forget, and the word ceremony is on the 12th. The future of the campus is in jeopardy, and it needs to be in the right hands. Those hands are the hands of Mish and Annie. I'm super excited to officially announce our run for the 2024 student body presidential election. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, she's kidding, guys. SGA elections are coming up very shortly, so check out this video. Hey, guys. I'm Bryn. I'm the director of events for SGA, and we've got a lot coming up in the next couple of weeks that we want you to know about. As most of you probably know, it's a student body president and vice president election season. Join us tonight in DeMoss 1286 at 7 p.m., where you can learn from both sides about what they stand for and make an informed decision next week when you vote. Voting will be open next Wednesday and Thursday through your Liberty email. And we'll have activities going on both days. On Wednesday, join us for a Celsius giveaway. And on Thursday, join us for a hop and good time at 2.30 on the lawn with Sodexo. Sodexo will provide Easter-themed treats, and we will provide Easter-themed activities. And you'll also get one more chance to hear from our candidates as they table at the event. So join us next week for these fun activities, and be sure to cast your vote between next Wednesday and Thursday. I know that a lot of you guys like to stay away from campus during CFAW weekend, but seriously, don't do that this time because Chris Renzema is coming here to Liberty to perform on this stage, probably right here in this spot where I'm standing. So you really don't want to miss that because that sounds like the coolest thing in the world. Dude, his album just came out last, oh, sorry. His album just came out last week. So pull out your phones, because I know you got one in your hand, and give it a listen before you go into this concert. Thank you. governments nor fire mayday mayday it's 8 a next wednesday check out this video for more hey if you're like me and if you're a student i'm sure you are like me you love getting an a and the good news i have for you is that on wednesday march 27th everybody gets an a everybody gets a an a day and on this A day, we're gonna have assessments about all kinds of things to make Liberty University better. And so I ask you to participate. I'd ask you to, to give your opinion. And I promise you that we will digest your opinions and, and take from that ways to make Liberty University the best it can possibly be. I look forward to seeing you and you getting your A on A day. Shout out to my RAs. Give them some love because it's RA Appreciation Week next week. Yeah, guys, your RAs do so much for you. So if you have like extra flames cash, if you want to take someone to the rot, that's on you, not on your RA. If you want to be on time for curfew and not make them go crazy, next week is the perfect week to do that. Maybe you get out of a cleanliness check. I don't know. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yes, it'll work favors for you. <laughs> well, I think that's all that's new. Yeah, let's get out of here, Mish. Yeah. Enjoy your day at LU.
You have no right to be ordinary. God has called you to be extraordinary. say thank you to Stephanie Owens, a Liberty grad, graduate now in Nashville. That song that she just sang for us here today released last week. The video came out uh, last night, and so she's doing a great job in Nashville putting out music. So thank you for being here, and we look forward to all the things God's going to do in and through you, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Well, obviously, it looks a little bit different in here today, mainly because there's a thing tomorrow night called Coffee House. How many people, how many of you come to Coffee House? So that'll be tomorrow night, but, uh, but today we have Convo, we're excited, we have Karen Kingsbury here today, 
along with some cast members of the brand new movie, Someone Like You. And in fact, uh, after our time of worship this morning, we're going to go right in. We're going to show the trailer for that movie. And then Karen's going to come up and share a little bit. She'll bring some of the cast up, have an opportunity of talking through uh, some of those types of things. Also, next week, Amazon's releasing the Baxter series, the television series from Karen's books as well. As well. So we're excited to have uh, them here today. But before we get there, let's all stand up and let's worship together. And let's recognize and understand that no matter what we do and no matter what we're going through, that there is a God in heaven who loves us. And as we just heard in that one song, he is faithful. So let's pray together this morning. Father, today we are grateful for who you are. God, we're grateful for your love. We're grateful for salvation. We're grateful for the, that one gift that changes everything, the gift of Jesus. And next week as we come together, and churches all around the world and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray that, Lord, that you would keep our hearts and our minds focused on that great moment that changed everything. And so, God, we stand here today and we thank you for that gift, but we also pray, Father, that you would speak to us and through us and in us and allow us to grow closer to you every single day because we know there are so many people around the world today who don't know you that need to have an encounter with you to experience, God, who you are and what you've done. And so I pray that you would use us, Lord, as our witness and our testimony. We would be faithful in sharing the gospel wherever we might go. And, Father, for that, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Bless our time of worship here today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together.
one that was in vitro, baby. We couldn't get pregnant otherwise. The procedure gave us two embryos. What about the other one? We gave it to a doctor who works with infertile couples. So the one that might have siblings? Hi. Uh, can we talk? Who are you? Why didn't you be excited? You were born for me. That's so hard to explain. I'm going to Birmingham. I work under the burn. All right, I love that reaction, so that's good. All right, I have a question for you. You did get that, like, Dawson and London were just friends, right? You got that part? So, okay. All right. Just saying. This is such a good, that's so good. I, I just, like, I could sit here and listen to you chat about it for a while. I love it. I remember where I was. First of all, hello, Liberty. Thank you for having us. It's been a few years since I've been up on this stage, but you look just as beautiful as you did last time I was here. So I remember where I was when I wrote the last page of the book, Someone Like You. And I was sitting in a chair upstairs in our house, just looking out the window at the fall leaves, and I, I could hear God say, this is gonna be your first movie. Well, that was in early or late, I guess, 2018. The book didn't come out until 2020 during COVID, and I kind of shoved that away, and you may know what that's like, to have that little voice of God, the Holy Spirit, is saying something to you and asking something of you. And you think, well, not now. Like, I'll, I'll do that later. And for me, you know, when I write a book, I mean, I cast it. I get to control the weather, the sets, the locations. But when you're making a movie, everything is on the line. But it wouldn't go away. And finally, in the summer of 22, I had a conversation with my amazing husband who loves Jesus very much. Yes. <laughs> I said to him, I think God wants me to make someone like you into a movie. I think he wants us to do it. Do that movie now. And he put his hands on my shoulders and he said, Karen, if we have to sell everything we own, then I believe that you can do this. And I will help you and I will stand by your side. And let's just commit to two things. Let's ask God every day for wisdom because we don't know what we're doing and let's ask him for favor. Because making a movie is one of the most difficult things a person could do. It doesn't even want to be made. And so you have, everything can come against you from COVID to illness, set issues, legal issues. And we just said, you know what? It's like that moment with a major league baseball player, right? The major league pitcher is on the mound and he's gonna throw a fastball so fast that that batter standing there ready to swing the bat has a half of a second, a half of a second, that's it, to decide whether to swing or not. And it was that moment for us, and so we said, all right, Lord, we're gonna swing. 
And we wrote the script. I wrote the script with my son, Tyler, who's here today. He is also the director of the film. You'll meet him in just a minute. And uh, I said, if you can help me write this, and if you would direct, I think we're, we're off to a good start. So we wrote the script, and we did pre-production in our home. I wouldn't recommend that, but we did. Um, and we loved on the people, and we said, you know, first we're going to need to love people and just like feed them well, like just love them because not everybody was gonna be a believer who came on our team, but if they could see Jesus in us, then maybe even if the movie never made it to the big screen, it would be worth it. So we did pre-production in our home and then we started filming in the fall of 22. We took 25 days to film the movie. We were right on budget and we were right on time. We had an incredible crew and a local producer um, in Nashville who helped us pull it all off. And now here we are, and Someone Like You opens nationwide in theaters on April 2nd. So we're so excited. So before I bring up, I, I have three of our actors with us today and the director, but before I bring them up, I thought we'd just show you a quick montage so you can get to meet them on the screen. I had the pleasure of hearing that in stereo because Sarah was singing too, so thank you, Sarah. I want to tell you just a, just a little bit about the story. Um, it's about this young architect who is in love with his best friend, and she doesn't love him like that. I know, right? Totally. Friend zone. It's a friend zone. Then... It gets more complicated. So then something tragic happens to the best friend. Dawson, the, ar the young architect, is very good friends with London's parents. And so in the grieving moments, uh, Dawson finds out that London was born through in vitro fertilization. And there was an extra embryo. And they didn't want to throw it away. So they donated it to a fertility specialist and never looked back. And now in his grief, the one last thing he can do for his friend London is he can go and find that brother or sister, the, the sibling that London would have always wanted, and he can see if she would like to know something about London or he would like to know about London. And he finds Andy Allen, who lives states away in Nashville, Tennessee. <clears throat> Yay, Nashville, give it up. And when he finds her, of course, it's like looking at his friend all over again. Mm -hmm. And here's this girl, Andy, who has no idea 
that she was adopted as an embryo. She doesn't know she's not biologically related to her family, and it rocks her world. And it sends her running to Alabama to try to meet these parents and to try to meet the sister, and then she learns that the sister is no longer alive. And so she asks Dawson if he would show her everything about London. But what Dawson never expected was that he might fall in love. So that's someone like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. You are my, you, we're going to just, right now, we're going to decide that you are the street team for this movie. Okay, so tell everyone. All right, I'm going to start with our director, Tyler Russell. Uh, hello, Tyler. hello, everybody. How are you? It's great to be here. Tyler went to Liberty for a year and then moved to Nashville where he was busy making music and making short films and that kind of thing. And when it came to someone like you, he was ready. So I just want to ask um, Tyler what, you know, what that was like directing your very first theatrical feature and uh, what, how, how do you lean in and get actors to do what you want them to do? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, thanks for having us. It's great to be here. And as she said, this is my mom. So give it up for all the moms. Yes. It's been, it's been really, uh, it's been very special to make this film with family. Uh, not every family can do things together, but we just prayed and committed it to the Lord and said, you know what, if we're going to do it, let's do it together and let's do it with excellence. And you know, directing a film is, uh, it's kind of done one shot at a time. I think when you think about the hundreds of shots that go into making a movie, we shot it in 25 days, technically 24 days, because we had a tornado. That's true. And that shut us down for one day. But you just focus on the next shot and just doing the next thing well. It's such a beautiful and complicated story. I think it asks the question, what would you do if you found out that your whole life was a bit of this facade? If you were adopted as an embryo, what would that do to your life? How would that rock your world? And through the brokenness that Andy feels, um, she finds a lot of beauty and a lot of healing. And I think that that's what's beautiful about making this movie is we all got to go on this journey as a cast and as a crew and have great conversations about um, how beauty can come from broken places. Yeah, I think um, watching, one of the things I loved is Tyler has done, has directed some uh, stage th projects as well. So he said, we have to rehearse, which isn't always the case. Um, we can hear from the actors on that too, but you wanted to bring in the leads to, to have a couple weeks to just kind of go through the emotions of it. How do you help them to get there? Well, yeah, I mean, I think sometimes you show up on set and it's like, great to meet you, I'm so-and-so, good to meet you, all right, now we have to fall in love today. Um, <laughs> and so it was great, we had two weeks with Sarah and with our other actor, Jake, to rehearse, to go through the script, to talk about you know, their opinion on certain scenes and. Uh, I think it's really important to get um, some time al alone with the script, with the actors, and really talk through it so that when you get on set and you have all the lights and on the cameras and all, you know, the crew, you can really focus on the job that you have to do. Yeah, that's great. Okay, I'm going to go to our leading lady, a true princess, and that's Sarah Fisher. <laughs> so Hi! <laughs> So Sarah, and this is my favorite thing, in some of the early screenings, people would come up and say, how did you find an actress who looked so much like the other one? Like, how did you do that? And, and then there was even one person said, you missed out on the chance of calling it doppelganger because they look so much alike. But you played both sisters. Yeah. Yeah, see? Oh, yeah. Mind blown. Aw, oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, so talented. So I want to ask Sarah to share with you, how do you play two totally different characters? How did you find some of those, you know, details about them? How, how did that go? Well, I think I'm going to have to throw that to you guys for a moment because, Karen, you built two beautiful, unique, such three-dimensional women that I was... It's such an honor to dive into one, let alone two. It was such an exciting challenge as an actor. And Tyler, you were so with me the whole way. You know, we would, we would shoot one scene 
with Andy, but later that day we'd be switching over to London. And sometimes London's laugh would sneak in and we'd be like, no, 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 she's next. Let's just hold off. So it was something where, you know, we're constantly weaving this really, um, yeah, this really challenging experience that was just, you, you both made so incredible. But I think what it came down to as well was just a, a lot of work in terms of, you know, how does Andy walk into a room different than London? How does Andy laugh? How does, how does London present herself? You know, both of them sitting here would look so different. So I think it was just paying uh, a lot of close attention to detail and to making sure that, you know, these beautiful characters on the page that I was able to find a way to bring them to life. And I think the big part of that is there's a little piece of me in my heart with, with and in both of them. And I fell in love with both of them. I just thought they were, they were so beautifully unique. And yeah, and then came the journey to try and, you know, see how we could really bring them both to life in a way that made it feel like they had a similar sparkle, but that they were still two different people. Yeah, that's great. And, the, and you know, they were different. They, one could sing, one couldn't sing, one couldn't ride a jet ski, one could. So they were different. They were different people, but they were twins. So at the end of the day, you know, you had to find a commonality as well as the differences. Well, and if I can brag really quick on Sarah, too. I mean, <laughs> thousands of, of women auditioned for this role, you know, and, and uh, we called back three actresses. And as soon as I saw Sarah on Zoom, we had a Zoom call back. And it was like, yes, she has the spark. She can play both of these roles. And the, and the Lord really provided that. You know, this movie wouldn't have been able to be made without an actress who could pull off both of those roles. And so she was so intentional to say, let's get it right. You know, let's create these two different um, characters uh, that we wrote on the page. You want to make me cry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that is your job. <laughs> um, actually. <laughs> OK. I next want to introduce you to Scott Reeves. Scott plays uh, the father of one of the girls that Sarah plays. Um, Scott, Bo so they, I could be up here for another 10 minutes giving you the, like, the biography, the bio on each, because Sarah has a long career. She starred in Degrassi when she was just a kid. Yes, Sarah. <laughs> Um, and now Scott, he's been acting for 35 years. Scott was also a very good friend of mine. And so I knew that if I could get a dad character, if there was a dad character in the book, that I would be able to use Scott. So I didn't have to audition Scott because I knew how talented he was. I had never met Sarah. So she came through the process, rose through those thousands of girls to be the one to be the star of the show. But Scott, I was so thrilled to have. So Scott, I wanted to ask you, how do you reach the depths of emotion that you had to find in doing the role of Larry Quinn? Well, first of all, thank you for having us. Uh, this is an incredible place, and you guys have welcomed us with open arms. So thank you. Um, I think it all starts, Karen, at the top mm -hmm. and trickles down. and. Leadership is such a huge part of making a project like this because it just kind of bleeds into everything else. And you created this, you and, and Tyler as the director especially, the writing is obviously, you know, I don't have to say anything about that, it speaks for itself. And then uh, Tyler's directing, he is such uh, an actor's director and he created such a safe place to be able to take risks, and he gave us the freedom, and at the same time, guided us uh, like the amazing leader he is. And so it's, it's creating a safe place to be able to go there, first of all. And uh, secondly, you know, I, I am, I've graduated into, into the dad stuff, and, and, I, and I embrace that, I love it, because Sarah is, I have a daughter, exactly Sarah's age. And so, you know, I, that was probably the hardest thing about doing this movie is re, diving into places like that, that are, that are uncomfortable. And, 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 you know, grief is such, it's something that I personally haven't had to deal with on that level. So, you know, to personalize that with my own daughter, you know, you have to kind of go places that that hurt and go places that you that are unbearable and uh but at the same time 
you know, there's the redemptive aspect of everything. Uh, obviously, th this, this set, I told Karen, I said, I have never worked on a set that had the, the, this undertone that was always there. And we all know what that was. I mean, Karen is, is it looks to the Lord for everything and, and trusts in the Lord for everything. And, and the Holy Spirit was just all over this movie. And you could feel that from the moment you walked in. And uh, so, it, you know, it's, that's, that's how I managed to that, is, is just knowing that um, it was a place that I could trust and, uh, and it was safe. And, and so that was, it was, there was nothing, you know, I've never worked on a, on a project like this before. So I'm really proud of it. And we're so proud of Scott. He is going to make you cry. So if you come to the screening tonight that we're going to show the whole movie, we've only done that. This will be the third time we're only doing the three screenings before it comes out on April 2nd. And Scott, um, just, he really is that grieving father. Like you really see it and there's so much to wrestle through. So thank you for what you brought to that, Scott. Thank it's you. It's amazing. Okay, now we have Austin Robert Russell. And Austin um, is an interesting situation because uh, he's first of all, Liberty grad, right? <laughs> Yeah, go Liberty. Okay. Uh, Austin is our youngest son, my, my husband and myself. So he's Austin Robert Russell. Russell's our married name. Now you know the secret, my husband and I. Um, Austin was a very, he'd already been in several movies. He loves acting. He really works hard on his craft. Somebody knew one of them right there. So it's great. We're cheering for you already. It's great. Yeah. Um, but Austin wanted to work not with me to get the part. He wanted to work with the casting director that I didn't know, but I hired to help us to cast the movie. He said, look, you know, you, you're working with some talented people, and I want to make sure that I'm right for this part. And it mattered to him. So he went and he worked with our Ricky Maslar was our casting director. And, you know, I told her, I said, you got to just be straight with me if she, you know, if, if you see that he's got the part, that he's, he's the right person for the role of Matt, then great. But Austin's okay to just take the next thing, if not. And she called me one day, it was early in the morning, and she said, he killed it. He's ready. He wants this part. So anyway, now we have, um, you know, Austin is uh, playing Matt Bryant. Austin, you don't get the girl in the movie. Spoiler. Spoiler. It's true. Spoiler. It's true. A little bit of a spoiler, but <laughs> how it is sometimes. <laughs> no, I know, but... Somebody has to not get the girl. That's so. right. I'm so sorry. It happens. That's life sometimes. <laughs> I want to hear, I want to hear Austin. I'm, I'm, see, at least they love you, so that's good. Austin. <laughs> What a burn. Savage. <laughs> savage. Savage. Savage, Mom. That's what they say. Um, Austin has a really unique part, not just playing um, Andy's boyfriend. He also gets to kind of be our voice in the sense of things that go on, that and decisions that Andy makes when she has her world rocked. We get to see the like kind of flip side of, like, why are you leaving to go to Alabama to meet these people? These are your actual parents, so what if you were adopted as an embryo? He gets to raise those questions for us, and it's super important to the movie. Um, and it was important that we believed him. So I, I just kind of would love to know your favorite thing about bringing Matt Bryant to life and how you found that uh, as you did wow. your performance. Wow, uh, that's a great question. Uh, first of all, it's great to be here. Hello, Liberty. Oh, it's Austin it's was crazy. Rigid. I was uh, not too long ago. I feel like I was just sitting right where you are. So I know how it is. I know you have a ton of homework and a ton of essays. So thank you for being here. It's a blessing to be here today. Um, and bringing Matt to life was it was it was a fun journey. You know, it was uh, he's he's an interesting character because he's he tries to like you said he tries to be the bridge between Andy's new life in Birmingham and her old life in Nashville and the family that loves her and, and the people that love her. And um, you get to kind of, I think the audience will relate to Matt because he, he finds himself very confused by a lot of the circumstances going on. Uh, and so I think he's a relatable character. 
And he, he has to balance letting Andy live and letting her explore and, and find this new uh, life that, that she has stumbled upon while also trying to remind her, hey, in, you know, we love you in Nashville. We're fighting for you. So that was fun. Uh, and then, yeah, and I, I want to speak briefly about the casting process because that was, you know, it's, if you've done any acting, you know that it's, it's better to have the right pieces in place. And growing up, being familiar with her books and, and going to events, I knew how much you all love the books and how much they mean to you all. So to me, it was super important to, to actually go, you know, I told my agent, I was like, let's, let's actually audition for this. Let's find the casting director. And that was super important to me because it, it wouldn't have helped. I wanted the movie to do well. I wanted it to be well. And it wouldn't have helped to, to just have me a part of it if it wasn't the right fit. And so it was a blessing, and I think it's, uh, it was a good faith walk for me, too, to give it up to God and to go, hey, if this is meant to be, it's going to work out. And if it's not, then that's all right. There's something else around the corner. So, Thank you, Austin. Sarah, I think, you know, um, one of the things I loved about Sarah was that she is humble. And, you know, you, you have a beautiful journey from where you're sitting right now to whatever dream God has placed on your heart. The one thing I can tell you with this entire team up here is there's this beautiful humility that they don't think they've arrived. They don't think they know everything. I don't know anything. I mean, we're just like learning as we go. They have great talent. They have great experience, but they don't come into a room assuming anything. And they're easy to work with. And that's one practical thing I think you can take away from this is be easy to work with. And what that means is, what did Jesus say? Think of others better than yourself. So you come into an audition or you come into a big interview, find out about that company, find out about that project so that you can ask about them and you can love on them and be a light to them. Don't make it all about yourself, and you'll go much, much farther. You'll see the successes that God has for you sooner, if you can remember that, that humility piece. Um, Sarah, I think just something fun, like for today, are you Team Matt or Team Dawson? Like, Oof. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> go Matt, yeah. Well, he's right beside yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so it sounds like Team Dawson. <laughs> that was like a very half-hearted. Uh. You know what? There is so much beauty in both relationships. They just look different. But they're both very, very beautiful. <laughs> him, it's him. <laughs> like they said that was a cop-out. It's okay, sweetheart. That was a cop-out. Stop harassing my daughter, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott says, stop harassing my daughter. It's so cute. Okay, I want to hear just a final thought from uh, Tyler, from the director, and then I'll close this up. Yeah, well, I mean, we've talked a bit about making the film, and uh, sh as she mentioned earlier, movies are almost impossible to make, and I'm sure some of you guys are facing things that seem impossible to do. Maybe it's a project, or um, maybe you're trying to raise funds for a trip, or, or maybe you're going through a health crisis, or someone in your family is, you know, and it seems impossible. And for, for me, I had a moment where I go, it's just a movie. Is it really that important? And God said, yes, this movie can touch so many people and the message can touch so many people. And I want you to know that. Put, I, I want to encourage you to put God first in everything that you do because we led every single day with prayer. We put God first in this film. And, um, and I knew that God was saying, if you put me first, I'll give you everything that you need. And the Bible says, seek first his kingdom and righteousness and all these things will be added unto you, right? So seek the Lord in all things and whether it's school or your dreams or your family, just surrender to the Lord and seek him and know that he is gonna work it out and he's gonna give you everything that, that you need because we totally saw that in the film and it's a miracle that it got made and I love talking about the miracles that God did throughout this movie because he gets all the glory, so... Keep seeking the kingdom. Yeah, I was going to end with that. It's funny. I don't, we didn't compare notes, so thank you, Tyler. It's Matthew 6, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Don't rush it. Don't rush the process. God is with you. He is for you. He's going to lead you, so hold on to that. And uh, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you. Can we just hear it for the cast and for Tyler? <laughs> Thank you.
Lord, we thank you so much for every student here. Lord, you have beautiful plans for them, and you are in process with them right now. Lord, I pray that they would have taken something away from our conversation today that will inspire them and encourage them for the dreams that they have that are on their hearts that might take decades to come to fruition. That's okay. Pray you walk with them on the journey and that they continually turn their face to yours. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this day. We thank you for someone like you, the movie. It's a dream come true, and thank you that we can celebrate it here at the most amazing university on the planet, at Liberty University. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you all. Can we say thank you to Karen Kingsbury and all of the uh, cast who are here? Now, just so you know, before you leave, before you leave, let me share a couple of quick announcements with you. Noon today, so just in a few minutes, she's going to be up in the bookstore. If you want to go by and meet her, she's got books up there. She'll sign those for you. And the cast will be there as well. Yeah. Tonight at 7 o'clock, the entire movie will be shown over at Thomas Road Baptist Church. You'll be able to come over. It's free. Come on over. The cast will be there. You'll have the opportunity of meeting them there as well. Now, before you leave again, remember tomorrow night is Coffee House. Next Wednesday, there is no convo or campus community. It's a day. On Friday, we have our Good Friday worship convo that will be here. Then there's Easter, and then the following week, listen to this, Jackie Hill Perry will be here. And then to follow up on that Friday, Coach Tony Dungy will be here. So a lot of great things coming up. God bless you. You're dismissed.